Well, you won the Mass Singer. You won Dancing with Stars. One competition which you did not win as American Idol. Is this true? <laughs> what I mean, like, is this a world that we live in? Is this true that I read that you auditioned for your second season and that they didn't want you? I mean, is this true? Because I, I don't understand how that's possible with, with this voice. <laughs> Yes, I did. I actually auditioned and I didn't even make it past the producer shout. <laughs> they sent me right home. But I ended up working for Fox anyway and they had to pay me this time. So I wasn't singing for free. So I feel like it kind I feel like of, I got a better deal out of that. <laughs> I think you got a better deal out of it. Is there anything, I mean, Simon Cowell is one of the producers. Is there anything you want to say to Simon Cowell here today now that you've won The Mass Singer? Oh no, you know what's so funny? I, when I did uh, the UK version of um, what was the show that they that that that, that the, the singing show that they had in the UK X Factor X Factor I did X Factor UK and I actually did we did Don't Stop Believing and there was a part where I do like this really high note they they made me like go up to Simon and turn his his chair around and I sang this really high note in his face and after he was like Oh my God you didn't audition for me I would have never said no to you. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, you know, but it, it, it all, it all worked out. Yeah, it did. Well, one competition that we do have coming up is in the new year, January 11th, we are going to see you go against your Glee co-star Chris Colfer on Celebrity Name That Tune. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Are you, are you, you know, do you want to take home another win? You know, are you out, <laughs> are, 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 do you have enough trophies at this point, Amber? Ah, no, you don't get a trophy for that show, but you do get bragging rights if you win. And Chris Cover is very competitive. <laughs> He's super competitive, but it was it was a lot of fun. That show was a lot of fun. I think people are going to enjoy all the the um the crap that we talked <laughs> on that show. <laughs> I I cannot wait to watch it. Do you like you've met? You say like you are a Robin Thicke fan. You know you've met Oprah. I mean I don't know where you go after meeting Oprah. Like do you get starstruck? Like you said, you've been in this business for so long. Like are you the type that gets starstruck? I, I, do, I do. I mean, I don't know if it's starstruck. I just, it, I'm just in awe of people's gifts. Like, I'm just like, wow, your gift is so amazing. And I, I just, I appreciate it. And I love telling people how much I appreciate, it, especially in music, because music means so much to me. And it's the language of the soul, honestly. And so when someone has touched my soul, I can't help but show them love. What about Oprah? Like, you know, just from, you know, one girl to the other, that as someone who's never going to meet Oprah, I can tell you I'm probably not. Like, what is Oprah <laughs> like? Um, She smells amazing. Uh, She's super sweet. She knew my mom's name, like, when she met her, and she took the time to kind of sit and talk to everyone and really take interest in, in who we were. And she's just, she's a lovely person, just a really lovely person. When you think back to your time on Glee, like, is there just one memory that's like overarching as just like, you know, one of the best memories of that show? Oh my gosh, there's so many. Um, I lived my life on that set <laughs> for so many years, but honestly, my favorite moments are the ones that weren't on camera where we were just like on set for like 17 hours and everyone's tired, but we decide to all come out, you know, at base camp and like, play some stupid camp game or like do a sing along, you know, somebody Mark brings out the guitar and we all just kind of like sat and sang along just to keep each other awake <laughs> and alive <laughs> so we can get done with filming. But those are, those are actually like the little in between moments are my favorite moments. I love it. What do you think about, you know, the upcoming like discovery, this glee expose, which they're calling it. I mean, I guess some cast members are participating. I mean, is there anything, I mean, are, are we over this? Like, we've heard about stuff for years. Like, I mean, is there really a need for this, this upcoming Discovery do you show? Know, do you know what I'm really proud of? I'm really proud of Kevin and Jenna. They have a, a, a new podcast called What You Really Missed on Glee. And what they're really doing is taking back the narrative of what it is that we actually did on the show. You know, it wasn't a reality show. It's not a gossip show. It wasn't any of those things, like, we worked really hard to create a legacy on on television and we did some pretty epic things. And like, um, those are the things that I'd rather highlight. I don't know anything about this documentary. I don't know any of them. I, I've spoken to the cast. I don't know anybody in the cast that's doing it. <laughs> that's worth talking to, no shade, but <laughs> I don't, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, so 
you know, people are going to have their opinions. They're going to say what it is that they say, but we were there. And um, them doing this podcast is, a, is, an, is an incredible answer to all of the, the drama that's out there in the world because what we did was amazing. And there were just as many amazing times than the five tragic things that happened on that show. Absolutely. And I mean, their podcast is absolutely phenomenal. I didn't really think yeah. about it like that, but you're right. It is kind of like taking the narrative back. That's such a good yeah. way to put it. I mean, listen, you, you, you kick off the podcast with Ryan Murphy. So I don't really know. I mean, that's about right. <laughs> How much more validating can you get? Like discover don't have him. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. Are you a fan? Like, do you, I mean, listen, you're very busy. You have all these upcoming projects. Do you have time? Like, have you watched like American horror story pose Dom or any of these brilliant oh, yeah. things? I mean, I, I love pose like pose is uh, Angela and, um, and Angelica was at my, um, event last night I just hung out with her Jellica Ross last night um I love Pose I love American Horror Story I couldn't stomach Jeffrey Dahmer I, I just I couldn't do it the man is Jeffrey Dahmer is disgusting and I I just I could not watch it so that's just that's just me um the actor is amazing you know the cast is amazing I love me some DC Nash you know I think that the cast was absolutely amazing but personally for me I just couldn't watch it um I have a sensitivity toward it but American Horror Story, I've been a fan since the very beginning. Nip Tuck, I was a fan of. Popular, I was a fan of. Like, I'm I'm a fan of the Ryan Murphy sphere, the whole world. Same here. Nip Tuck, yeah. phenomenal, popular. Well, I mean, you know, Ryan does like to work with the same people. Look at Evan Peters, to your point. I mean, might we one day see Amber Riley on American Horror Story? Oh, Lord. Listen, you never know. <laughs> you never know. And you never know. As we wind down and wrap up, talk to me about, I know you have the Black Beauty experience, the the, back, the Black Beauty effect coming up. Talk to mm -hmm. me about that and what that project meant to you. Oh, wow. I was so honored to be asked to be a part of that docuseries. It's, the docuseries is basically um, uh, an inside look from um, uh, the tastemakers in the beauty industry, Black, black people, Black men and women that uh, have kind of been the interrupters uh, in the beauty industry, whether that's skin, whether that's hair, you know, makeup, whether that's in Hollywood, you know, we have people like Sam Fine and, um, you know, talking about how uh, we didn't really have a lot of makeup or things that were really for us in this industry. And we took it upon ourselves to create those things and even creating some trends that we may not be recognized for. Well, this is the time in that documentary to kind of give people their flowers. And it was super inspiring, so inspiring. It's a tearjerker, but it's also just a story of triumph. And I promise you, when you watch it, you are going to walk away thinking you can start your own beauty brand. One, you like 100% are going to walk away thinking you can start your own beauty brand. <laughs> I I watched it and yes I'm not a crier I'm from New York I'm tough but I it was it was emotional it was touching it was right it was great 